Hi guys, welcome to Empower In. My name is Carolyn Porter Thomas, and thank you so much for watching my channel and welcome to Anatomy 101. In this video, we're going to go over the different ways the muscle tissues get their reliable source of energy, which is adenosine triphosphate, often abbreviated as ATP. We will also learn about glycolysis or aerobic and anaerobic respiration. We will learn about the different types of muscle contractions, which are isometric, isotonic, and eccentric, and we will also discuss fatigue. So we do have a video jam-packed with information. Also, this is the 19th video in this video series, so if you haven't already, make sure you click the link above where you can find the entire course. If you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, give this video a thumbs up, also post a comment, and subscribe to the channel. So without any further ado, let's get right into the video. With the high consumption of ATP, Muscles need to have a reliable source of it, and no contraction can occur without proper and sufficient ATP. It is usually regenerated via anaerobic glycolysis, fermentation, creatine, and anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic means without oxygen, and aerobic means with oxygen. Creatine phosphate metabolism is the first method and the molecule creatine phosphate stores energy. When there is no contraction, the energy phosphate from ATP is lent to creatine forming creatine phosphate and ATP. That is an energy reserve for ATP formation. On the other hand, when the contraction starts, the phosphate from the creatine phosphate is lent back to the ADP molecule forming ATP. The enzyme creatine kinase catalyzes the lending back to the phosphate molecule, making the process last for a very short time. Despite this, the energy given doses do not last longer than 15 seconds, and another source has to come into place which calls for it glycolysis when the ATP is depleted. Glycolysis is an anaerobic process and partakes the breakdown of glucose in order to obtain ATP. But it is not a fast process and produces only two ATP and pyruvic acid molecules. And when there is not enough oxygen, the pyruvic acid forms lactic acid. Accumulation of lactic acid causes what is known as muscle pull. After the conversion of pyruvic acid to N enzymes NADH and NAD plus are recycled and the process continues. Aerobic respiration is the last method and entails a process where glucose or an alternative nutrient is broken down in the presence of oxygen and produces ATP, water and carbon dioxide as byproducts. This method gives muscles 95% of the energy it consumes when resting or when slightly active, and it is an effective method as compared to the other methods by producing approximately 36 ATP molecules. This process needs glucose and myoglobin, which is an oxygen-carrying protein. Fatigue occurs due to the inability to contract. When a person uses his or her muscles intensely, the post-exercise oxygen stored for ATP compensation is depleted, and it is required to convert the formed lactic acid into pyruvic acid, or into glucose or glycogen. Usage of this reserve leads to oxygen debt. Types of muscle contractions. Muscle contractions can be isotonic, isometric, or eccentric. Isotonic contractions are due to tension, which is constant, and the size of the muscle changes and can be concentric or eccentric. Concentric muscle contraction is shortening while contracting. Eccentric muscle contraction is lengthening while contracting. Think of a bicep. They can either be involuntary, voluntary, or both. The elongation is due to tension that is greater than the muscle, generated to force. The last of the contraction types is isometric. Isometric contractions are contractions that produce a force without affecting the muscle size or length. This mainly affects the hands and forearms, such as in the case of gripping something. A muscle can have a graded response due to contraction with a force that has different degrees of intensity and is referred to as a graded muscle response. The graded contractions can be quantal or wave summations. Quantal summations includes increasing contractile cell number or motor units, thereby it boosts the contractile force. Wave summation 
and tenterization, on the other hand, is due to a muscle cell being stimulated even before it's relaxed after facing previous stimuli, causing a pileup of contraction that produces a wave-like pattern of contraction. And if there's a high frequency stimulus, then a sustained contraction called a tetanus or tetany occurs. Response to a single stimulus is called a muscle twitch and its duration is intermediate in most but postural muscles exhibit slow twitch and lastly a fast twitch can be exhibited in the eyeball. Twitches have a refractory period that is due to the hyperpolarization of the sarcolemma. A latent period is due to the precontractile physiochemical events and the relaxation period. All right guys, I really hope you liked that video. Hope you learned a ton in a very fascinating and fun way. Make sure you stay tuned because in the next video we're going to go over the force of the muscle contraction and the factors that affect the force of the muscle contraction. We will discuss the number of fibers and how that affects the force and precision of the muscle movements. We will also discuss the three phases of the muscle contraction, being the latent contraction and relaxation period. We will also discuss the degree of muscle stretch. So stay tuned for the next video in this course. Also, if you are studying anatomy and physiology, make sure you become a member of my channel because I've uploaded my best-selling program, How to Study for Anatomy and Physiology, there. In this video, I share with you specific tips on how to enhance your memory, especially when it comes to all of the anatomy terms. There have been many sources that say that anatomy and physiology one and two, you need to learn over 10,000 terms. And that is not an easy thing to do, especially when the words are literally not in English. English there in Latin. But there's a lot of fun ways to do it and a lot of tips and tricks for you to learn. So I go over all of this in the course. As usual guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Love you. Bye.